Great Britain, 1945. With the country in ruins and a population forever changed by the horrors of war, a new cultural landscape was emerging. A month after VE Day, Sadler's Wells Theatre in London opened its doors with a very British opera. It was a work that matched the desolate mood of the country, and it propelled its 31-year-old composer from the bright young thing of British music to a major figure on the world stage. Benjamin Britten is one of the most important British composers uh, to have worked. Uh, in particular, his contribution to opera is absolutely vital. The scene, a fishing town at the end of the 19th century. The occasion, an important one for British music. London's famous Sadler's Wells Theatre is opening for the first time since the Blitz with a new work by the young British composer Benjamin Britten, his first opera. Peter Grimes is an intense psychological drama based on a poem by George Crabb. Grimes is a gruff outsider living in a claustrophobic Suffolk fishing village where the provincial locals torment him with false accusations of murder. Peter Grimes was a watershed. The reception of it by the audience was, it was immediate. It hit everyone in the solar plexus. And there's no question that it turned Britain from being the promising young composer that he had been into a world-class superstar. Though a relatively challenging work, Peter Grimes remained classical music as people understood it and offered reassurance that culture could continue in a post-war world. Britain very rarely discussed his music on television but he made an exception in 1968 when he revealed that his composing career started precociously early, despite there being very little music at his school. There was no music at all. That's not quite true. At the end of each term, on the last evening, we sang some songs. That was nice. That was very nice. But <laughs> that was the limit of our music. Well, how come when you were nine, you, you, uh, you wrote an oratorio, and I believe you wrote an aria for God in C minor? Yes, yes. I uh, hoped it was the key he'd like. <laughs> The social isolation felt by Peter Grimes had many parallels in Britain's own life. Britain was gay at a time when homosexual acts were illegal and spent the war in America as a conscientious objector. He was also culturally isolated by opting to live outside the London scene, a choice he explained in a BBC radio interview. Why do you choose to live in Oldborough, in your native Suffolk, and rather than in London and, or some other I find big, centre? I find big cities distracting. I find, I like, I've always liked the country life since I was a child, particularly the sea, and uh, I have very deep roots in Suffolk, and I cannot work and live without roots.
Benjamin Britton was a nice man. He do come on the beach in the winter time if the fish and any of them ever stop and have a word with you. I ain't got nothing about Benjamin Britton. He is, he is a very nice man. Bringing the mountain to Muhammad, Britton founded a music festival in his hometown in 1948. The Aldborough Festival, which is still going today, was thriving when BBC News visited Britain at home to hear more about his pet project. I think it expresses the uh, tastes of two or three of us who have the pleasure and luck to live in Aldborough. Peter Pears and Imogen Holst and myself have rather strong, perhaps individual tastes in music. And the Aldborough Festival is really uh, comprises music and art of all kinds that we like. Luckily, after 12 years, we've built up a nice audience that likes the same kind of things as we do. And if I may put it this way, everybody mucks in in Aldborough, do they? Oh, I'd like to emphasize that fact. Yes. You see, it's not by any means just our festival, the few who select the programs. Everyone in the whole town, everyone perhaps is too great a word, but most people are involved with the festival in some way or other. And the amount of work that is done by the ordinary man in, and woman in the street is incredible. I cater for my local trade. I don't even stop to think about what visitors might want. If I haven't got what they want, that's just too bad. In any case, they come in and their attitude is all, hadn't got so-and-so, you'd think it was Fortnum and Mason's, <laughs> not the village shop. Someone unlikely to pop in for a pint of milk was the Queen, who visited in 1967 to open a new building for the burgeoning festival. I have much pleasure in declaring open the Maltings Concert Hall and Opera House. Britain was quite guarded in television interviews, but a few months after the Queen's visit, the BBC went behind the scenes of the Aldborough Festival and captured a candid portrait of Britain as he rehearsed his new work, The Building of the House. Same place, please. That's quite a new mood. are getting louder already. Do keep it quiet, please. Absolute hush. Chorus, your first entry may seem in this very lively acoustic to be rather confusing. Keep going at the same speed that we've been going on. Or, except the Lord. The... You see, at figure five, what man do build, it's just a natural warmth as you go up. Don't let it flower into a sort of Tosca-like sound. Keep it quite hushed. If people can't hear what I say, can you complain? I'll try and s support my voice. Straighten at four, please, except. <laughs> I've heard a lot of composers being rather rude about Britain, actually. Um, he is not a composer that every other composer admires in the way that, let's say, everyone admires Stravinsky. And I think that's partly because his music is almost deliberately non-intellectual. And he does some very, very simple things which 
work when he does them and I think possibly other composers are a little sniffy about it because it's the kind of simple trick that you can't really get away with unless you're Britain. I have a particular inclination as a composer to want to write music that is useful and if someone asks me to do something my inclination is to want to please them.